still basking in the euphoria of the Nigerian 62nd Independence Day celebrations, a closer peep into the social, economic, and political dynamics is necessary from the diaspora perspectives. On this episode of the diaspora, we have a special message by the Minister of State, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Supervising Minister to Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Ambassador Zuberu Dada, for the Nigerians in the diaspora. And also, many Nigerians in the diaspora have been speaking on issues agitating their minds as Nigeria marks 62 years of nationhood. And the Atlanta City Council has made a proclamation by recognizing October 1st, 2022 as Nigeria's Independence Day in the city of Atlanta and also in Washington, D.C. And of course, do not forget our diaspora of the moment. This is your favorite show, The Diaspora, and I am your host, Shaliwa Ajela. Please stay with us. Let's begin with the special Independence Day message by Ambassador Zubeiru Dada, Minister of State, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Supervising Minister to NITCOM. Take a listen. My message for all Nigerians, whether at home or abroad, is happy anniversary. Our country, Nigeria, is 62. It may sound a long time for some, but certainly Nigeria is very, very young. Nigeria, as I said, is still a developing nation. Nigeria certainly has its imperfections. But we believe that with a lot of uh, concerted effort, we shall certainly, Nigeria shall certainly be much greater than it is. Nigeria has all the potentials. And the greatest potential it has is its human resource. Nigeria is greatly endowed with very intelligent people, very industrious people. And they constitute the bulk, if you like, of the resources of which Nigeria is very, very proud. Particularly those of us out there in the diaspora, Nigeria is very, very proud of you because you have been doing us proud. You stand out wherever you find yourselves in the world and that gladdens our heart. And therefore, that encourages I mean, the government of Nigeria to give you all the support that you need to continue to grow and to continue to be greater wherever you find yourself, and in whatever endeavors you are involved in. Our appeal, or my appeal to all Nigerians, especially those of you out there, is to please continue to be very good ambassadors of Nigeria. Wherever you find yourself, in whatever profession you find yourself. We have our challenges, but nobody will solve them for us other than ourselves. Yes, we have our diff I mean, minor differences. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. There are other countries that have much larger number of ethnic groups and nationalities, but that have remained together and that have galvanized towards building a nation. My advice to Nigerians in the diaspora is never to give up. Uh, they have a right, like all other Nigerians, to participate in the governance of their country. And one of the cardinal, uh, if you like, one of the main uh, pillars should be the right to vote. I think we're all agreed on this, that uh, all Nigerians, whether at home or abroad, have a right to vote. But there are, I believe, some basic uh, if you like, uh, arrangements that need to be made by appropriate authorities, especially talking about data. 
there is a need for us to have, you know, uh, a credible data of Nigerians abroad. And of course, we also need to address issues of legislation. Because as it is now, the laws do not, the electoral laws do not accommodate people voting from outside. I guess essentially because of lack of data. And which explains why the NITCOM, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and everybody else, is, we're all busy. I mean, uh, NIMSI are all busy collecting data of Nigerians around the world. I guess this is the foundation upon which all efforts will have to revolve in ensuring that Nigerians abroad are given a right to vote. I believe, and I, well, the cool thing about it is that the National Assembly itself agrees that there is a need to review that law in order to allow four diaspora voting. You know, of course, uh, the uh, issues of legislation take time. It's not something you just do in one day. But I believe the spirit is that we're all agreed. Both the executive and the legislature are agreed that there is a need for us to allow for diaspora voting. And of course, the moment all these issues are addressed, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, I mean, Nigerians who I mean, in the diaspora will be accommodated and will be given the right to vote like all citizens of this country. Not just because they make uh, remittances, but because they are essentially Nigerians. That is the basic thing. The fact that they are Nigerians, wherever they are, whether they make remittances or not, is irrespect. I mean, it's it's immaterial. But of course, the fact that they even make remittances makes it even more compelling for us to ensure that we give them that respect. We appreciate them for the contributions, tremendous contributions that they're making towards national development. Many thanks, Honorable Minister, for your patriotic message. Now, some Nigerians from Singapore, United States, Russia, and Africa have this to say of our fatherland. For a country of over 200 million people with different languages and religions, I would say that we have come a long way in terms of emancipation and economic growth, irrespective of our diversity. Yes, we are still bonded as a nation. Nigeria is blessed with rich human and natural resources that can compete with the rest of the world. Our human capital is second to none in the world. So we can collaborate with developed countries like America on how to improve our economy using information technology, just like countries like China, India. If you look at them, they don't joke with science. They have improved a lot of things using science. So we can adopt such things in order to better our economy. As Nigeria counts more years, so it's independence, so also the demand and the expectations of Nigerians on the country. We Nigerians in diaspora, we are also very much in the spirit of marking the day and be hopeful of Nigerian eventual success. So we wish Nigeria to build on its successes, correct the mistakes and bring everybody together as a country that we'll be proud of. But as we go further and build on, you know, build on, on uh, little by little and be fast and be precise on some of these things, success will surely be ours. I believe in that and I think a lot of us in the diaspora, we also believe in that because we are in countries that have gone through those processes and they are successful countries now. And I believe that Nigeria should be able to do that also for itself. Yeah, congratulations to Nigeria on the uh, 62nd uh, anniversary, independence anniversary. And, um, um, you know, especially to the people of Nigeria and the, um, uh, all the people who have working hard uh, trying to survive, um, you know, economically, socially and politically in Nigeria. I really, really wish them well. Uh, right now, as a diasporan, um, calling from United States, I think it is time that Nigeria uh, focus on, you know, uh, helping the Nigerians to uh, really 
make life better for them economically, especially by creating jobs for the young people. Um, that will really be helpful. And one of those ways to do that is to make sure that Nigeria has you know, constant uh, electricity and increases the, num the amount of megawatts uh, it can generate and transmit safely uh, you know, to the Nigerian people so everybody can walk and uh, be able to uh, do well. Also, building roads uh, that are safe uh, will also you know, lead to economic development, as the Chinese say. It said, they say that build roads and wealth will follow. Um, I think it is time that Nigeria really focus on that and understand that when you build roads, wealth always follow. Uh, you know, development, rapid development, rapid development always follow all the places that you know good roads you know are built. So that is very very important. The next thing regarding socially, I think re, you know, I think justice and equity uh, must you know, come to Nigeria to make sure that we have, you know, uh, we reduce social unrest, especially when all parts of Nigeria, especially when all people in Nigeria are seem to be getting justice, where nobody is deemed to be less than the other when it comes to the administration and adjudication of justice. The last one, politically, I think uh, as long as Nigeria can have free and fair election, where nobody is intimidated, where everybody has the right to vote and the vote counts and that you know, people who are not supposed to vote are not voting. Um, I think basically um, Nigeria will survive uh, politically. So I wish Nigeria all the best. We must congratulate ourselves for surviving 62 years against all odds, you know, and challenges. And especially congratulate Nikon for also uh, whether through the past few years, formative years, with all the challenges. As we go into election year 2023, I'd like to encourage all Nigerians to remain committed to making sure that we have a free and fair election, and especially this is an opportunity for all of us to really focus on uh, leadership, leadership quality. As you know, uh, leadership determines the character of any nation, and uh, speaking from the diaspora, especially in Singapore. What has made all the difference in Singapore is the quality of leadership. And uh, and I, I need to also encourage that we look into a way to follow the examples of the, uh, the Asian Tigers in terms of how they have taken democracy from the West uh, and then modify it to fit into their multicultural, multi-ethnic, uh, multi-religious environment to ensure that uh, leadership evolution, leadership accession is through credibility, capability, and integrity. The second thing is economic transformation. And I think Nigeria stand a very good chance of leapfrogging, you know, into industrial revolution, industrial uh, 4.0, you know, or we call it digital economy. And I, that is where NICOM is very important in this, and I think the federal government should consider to transform NICOM into a full-fledged uh, ministry of diaspora resources because diaspora has the potential to help Nigeria to leapfrog, you know, uh, into industrial uh, economy, industrial revolution, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of capabilities, there's a lot of understanding that the diaspora can bring into this. Nigeria is 62. <laughs> Well, in every country that has developed, they have their own uh, predicaments and they outgrow those predicaments. I think Nigeria is going through that predicament. But as it goes through this predicament, there must be a true leadership that can pivot this TT uh, or this growth process to fruition. I don't think we've been successful in that. Having said that, Nigeria has all it takes from the perspective of diaspora, or as you can say, taking a look from diaspora angle, Nigeria has all it can take to pioneer this very uh, young country to um, a developed nation. But the problem is, you cannot succeed in uh, 
in uh, bringing the development into the country if you neglect a particular section of a country. I am one of the guys that advocated and supported the idea of having the seventh geopolitical zone. And that seventh geopolitical zone should comprise the diaspora. The diaspora, as all of us knows, drives the engine of development. As we have arrived to this is the second bad day of this country, I want us to have so searching. What have we been doing for the last 62 years that didn't work? Should we continue to do the same? Or do we change the horses? If we have tried one, it didn't work. Let's try the second one and see if it works. Let us inclusively bring all diasporas in spheres of life and try that to see if that should make some changes. Nigeria is the center of everything in Africa. Nigeria is the mother of Africa. Let the mother bring the children together and see if the development will not thrive. I wish Nigeria the best. My message to Nigerians in the diaspora and Nigerians at home is a simple message, please. It's one of peace. Uh, you know, previous elections that have passed, we've had a lot of issues with rancor, lives have been lost, people have been injured. You know, lives, are, you cannot replace a life. A young life, an elderly life, it doesn't matter where you are. Our country is going to remain as one, no matter what. In the diaspora, I believe one thing we keep on fighting for, and I will continue to advocate for, is diaspora voting. Then during the diaspora, we meet so much to our country back home. We give our families and friends, and we remit to our country, and we want our country to grow. So the only thing I am pushing for is somehow in the political fair to get our politicians, our leaders, to consider diaspora voting as an option for us to integrate and support and be part of the political language and political, uh, uh, political um, dialogue as we move forward in the country. So of course, peace is my message. How can we make the country move forward? Nigeria is one country that is blessed with an abundance of natural and human resources. And I was reading the other day that about 70% of the population is made up of young people under the age of 30. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. This actually means that the workforce is supposed to be made up of a young, vibrant, innovative group of people that can take this to a whole different level. But unfortunately, there hasn't been you know, much investment in the future of our young people. And this has led to a lot of frustration, unemployment, and the mass exodus of talent and skills to different parts of the world. I mean, our young people um, are out there making a difference in other countries. And I, I do reflect on what can be done. And as I do that, I, I always wonder about how we always complain about how things are not working, but have we asked ourselves individually what we can do uh, to change the trajectory of our future? For instance, there's a country called Grenada and I had elections recently. And a 44 year old man called Dickon Mitchell won over an incumbent who has been there for about 19 years. And this is because young people decided that they want to change. And even though they didn't have a lot of resources at their disposal, they did what they had to do to bring about change in their country. And we have that opportunity in 2023 to vote, to decide and to, you know, come out en mass. I mean, this is not a time for political apathy. This is a time for everyone to raise up their hands so that they will be counted in actually making a difference in our country. Because I mean, things cannot continue the way they are. And I think until we individually decide that we will actually do what we can do, um, we will actually remain in the same spot. You know, there's a saying that so much evil is being done in the world, not because of those who actually do it, but because of those who possess the power to do something, but sit back and do nothing. It is time for us, all of us, each and every one of us, to actually get up and do something and hold our leaders accountable and decide that we want change. It's not time for the status quo. And I do believe that if we all, you know, put our hands and our hearts and our minds together, things will change in our country. Thank you, our frontline ambassadors. We are super proud of you. Out of the 26 government owned consulates in Atlanta, Georgia, Nigeria is the only African government owned. The Atlanta City has now recognized October 1st, 2022 
as Nigerians' Independence Day in the city of Atlanta. We congratulate Nigeria's Consulate General, Ambassador Amina Smiler, and Nigerians in Atlanta. Similarly, in Washington, D.C., Mayor Miro Browser has proclaimed October 1, 2022 as Nigerian American Day in Washington, D.C. Congratulations to Nigerians in Atlanta and Washington, D.C. Let's join Boy Alinko for some messages. Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? No, but someone is arranging, you know... Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately, doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad. Or even end up in prison. If you must travel, travel legitimately. Now to our diaspora of the moment. Our diaspora of the moment is Dr. Uchechi Iweala. Dr. Iweala grew up in Maryland and attended St. Albans in D.C. The Abia-born surgeon hails from Ohuhu in Umaha, North Local Government Area, Nigeria, and is the son of Dr. Okonjo Iweala. He earned his bachelor's degree with honors at Harvard College and received his M.D. and M.B.A. from Harvard Medical School and Harvard Business School. Dr. Iweala returned to the D.C. area to complete his residency training in orthopedic surgery at George Washington University. Following residency, he completed a fellowship in spine surgery at New York University. Dr. Uchechi Iweala is a board-eligible fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon who specializes in spine surgery. Dr. Iweala's specialties include robotic spine surgery, minimally invasive spine surgery, cervical and lumbar disc replacement, spinal fusion, arthrodesis, nerve releases spine injections, spinal deformity, spinal stenosis, degenerative disc disease, spondylolisthesis trauma and fracture care. Dr. Iweala published his numerous book, chapters, and peer-reviewed academic papers, including in the International Journal of Spine Surgery and the Journal of Orthopedics. His research interests include minimizing re-operation after spinal fusion, limiting the use of narcotics in spine surgery, and maximizing the efficiency and value of care for spine surgery patients. Dr. Iweala also has a passion for meeting surgical needs around the world. He has worked on health projects in Ghana and South Africa and recently co-founded a surgery center in Nigeria with his father, a trained neurosurgeon. He's also a member of the Lumbar Spine Research Society, the North American Spine Society, and the American Academic of Orthopedic Surgeons. Dr. Iweala became one of the first spinal surgeons in Maryland to perform a successful navigated lumbar spine fusion using a robot. Congratulations, Dr. Iweala. We celebrate you as our diaspora of the moment. That has been our package this week. We celebrate Nigeria at 63 next year, God willing.